Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sports Highlights, Insights, and Tips Show. Da 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 Sports! Ba 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 Highlights! Da 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 ha ha da 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 ba Insights! Boom 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 Tips. Hey, here we are. We're back. And we've got a brilliant man sitting over there. At least he appears brilliant. Does this have anything to do with your four and two week, maybe? Casey, four and two, buddy. Four and two. Winner, winner, winner. Hey. Remember you laughed at me about the Jets? I went that home. One. I went home. I did. I laughed right in your face about the Jets. Uh, I went home this weekend. Talked to a couple of buddies. They were like, Casey, love the pick show, man. You guys are great. You guys are entertaining. Your buddy, he is shit at picks, huh? Cold. I said to them, I was like, that's not usually him. You guys just give him, give him a little bit. He'll get it back on track. The name of the game with professional gamblers like us is consistency, right? Casey, and and this is where internally I'm struggling yeah, I had a big week. Yeah, I made all my money back. Yeah, I'm basically freaking loaded now. The problem I have is nobody can trust me either way. I told the people to fade me. What do I do? I win every game. That's where I'm. This week, we're back to winners. Don't winning. fade me. Do all not winning. fade me. Winners, 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 winners. That's all I'm doing all week. Winners, winners, winners. We've got the guy in the suit. You're the guy in the suit. That way, we don't want to trademark anybody else's shtick. Casey, I'm an analyst. I'm an analyst at this point. You know what you are? You're the boy in the blazer. I do it for a living, Casey. That's I what do they these call numbers you. for a living. That's what, that's what the people around the internet have been saying. Have you seen that boy in the blazer? I'm an analyst. I'm, an, I'm a goddamn analyst. You do kind of have a Dan Orlovsky feel to you right now. Thank you. And it looked pretty bald from this angle too, Case. Look at that. Something about the glasses. Oh, it's something. It's so, exactly. The glasses make my the forehead jacket. just, just grow. The glasses, the jacket. I mean, brother. We're not looking too much better up top here, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not about to call the the kettle black, if you know what I mean. Four um, hymns, give us a sponsor. Four, four hymns. Or actually, I'm a roaming guy myself, but no free ads. Uh, actually, always keep one here on my desk. Might as well throw a shout out to the boys over at the Pork Slut Hot Sauce Company. Porkslut.co, best motherfucking hot sauce in the business. I'm not just saying that. I literally, this isn't a full prop bottle. This is a half empty bottle because I keep one on my desk so I always have it near me. That's a fact. That wasn't even a planned ad. I just happened to have a bottle there. Casey, this might be my only problem with pork side right now. I got a whole entire shelf full of it. It's taking up too much space in my cabinet. And listen, I'm running through it. I just keep reordering too often. That, That monthly subscription... Is the perfect amount of hot sauce coming through? I'm never going to run out. I forgot about that monthly subscription. Good call. Never going to run out. Yep. Good call. Um, Porkslut.co. Go get your bottle today. Uh, first official ad on the show. That was kind of fun. Love it. Top 10 power rankings. These are in order. Number one team in the league. Just made fun of them. Team that's 5-0 is going to be number one. You got to go to the by the standings in some regards. And- Listen, they're a tough team. They might lose next week. They've looked Cooper the best. Rush. They've looked the. They've looked good. Too. They've looked That's the part. They're not a. They're not a. Let's call it. They're not a New York Giants, four and one. They're a Philadelphia Eagles five and zero. Oh. Exactly. Case number two on the list. We have the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Number three is the Chiefs. So we're gonna see a little two three matchup. The fact that they're favored by three points this week, and we'll jump into that game in just a minute. That means they're ahead of the Chiefs by a little bit. You got to put them at two, Chiefs at three. Yep. This Number is where, four. Is this where, right now, so far, you're by the book, right? You're you're all chalk so far. Standard. Standard. Number four, I think this is a pretty obvious one. Okay. I'm going the Dallas Cowboys only when they have Cooper Rush playing. Okay. Cooper Rush, absolutely electric. Dude's 5-0 and his career. I mean, where are we going starting quarterback? As soon as Dak comes back, they're probably dropping down to 15, 16, somewhere around that range once they get a loss under their belt. When that dude's throwing interceptions all over the field. Right now, they're number four as long as Cooper Rush is playing. So Cowboys with Cooper Rush, number four. Yeah, got you got it. it. 
Casey, number five, AFC North, dude. That's those the teams in the AFC North are battling already. That's why I got the Ravens coming in as five. Okay. Lamar Jackson slinging the ball. Get that contract, buddy. Number six. This one seems fairly obvious as well. The Miami Dolphins, if they had no concussions. Okay. If two wasn't out, Bridgewater wasn't out. This is a team that slots perfectly into the sixth spot. So you got the Cowboys without Dak at four and the Dolphins without concussions at six. That's correct. Understood. This one is going to be controversial. People are not going to like this one. Yeah, as if the concussions. Your Pittsburgh, the concussions your Pittsburgh, pick wasn't controversial, <laughs> but yeah, this one. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the seventh best team in the league. Come on, if Big Ben was still, if Big Ben was still playing this year, oh, if Big okay. Ben was still a quarterback, Steelers slot in your seventh spot easy. That's kind listen. Of, they got the they got the weapons on offense. They got the highest paid defense. What are we doing? We need somebody to sling the rock. Pickett's not the guy. Look down the street. Not the guy. Mitch, not on the street anymore. Bust. We need Big Ben. That's low for them, too, honestly. Steelers with Big Ben this year should be higher on that list. That that will be the controversial part. People will be like, Steelers with Big Ben at seven? That's more of a top four to me. Tough, tough. <laughs> Cardinals at eight. Everybody knows Kyler Murray. Dude's an absolute freak. Covered against the Eagles last week, even though you had the Eagles, even though you said Philly's not a bunch of scumbag fans. And I get a bunch of people texting me, hey, we're not scumbags. You're scumbags. Yep. Lay it out. That was my, my worst possible scenario. An Eagles win, but not a cover. It was miserable. Yeah. Terrible. Number nine, Falcons against the spread this year. Okay. That team <laughs> That came deserves to, to be play. higher. That's an absolute, that that is a snubbing by putting them at number nine. Falcons against the spread, arguably best team in the league this year. Casey, I, I sat down and rethought about that. Hypothetically, they should be one or two. They're undefeated. Yep, exactly. They're the same spot as the Eagles. The Eagles aren't that good. Yep. The Eagles aren't doing our Eagles are not as impressive winning as the Falcons are covering this bet. Those backdoor covers, buddy. Crazy. Those are all day long. It's entertainment for days. I tell you what, Falcons definitely aren't in Coward's top ten. No. Definitely not no. in Coward's top ten. And to round this out. Number 10, we got the Indianapolis Colts preseason. That team was supposed to come in here and rock the world. And if they were as good as they should have been, they're slotting in at the 10 spot right now. They're still on our big board, and we're still talking about them. So we got the Indianapolis Colts preseason team at the 10 spot. Can you give us one final rundown? No explanations, just top to bottom, 1 through 10. Eagles in the one spot, Bills in the two spot, Chiefs in the three spot, Cowboys only with Cooper Rush in the four spot, Ravens in the five spot, Dolphins no concussions in the six spot, seven spot is the Steelers with Big Ben, eight is the Cardinals, nine is the Falcons against the spread, and the Colts round out the top ten with the preseason team that we all were promised. Colts expectations. Exactly. Beautiful. What a... What a <laughs> Man, you put that jacket on, and I'm telling you, something changes about you. That was quite the analysis. Casey, maybe in the, the second third of the third, second third of the year, we'll uh, jump back and maybe we'll do a re reevaluate. All right, beautiful. Love to hear it. Uh, first game this week, we've got the Patriots at the Browns. Browns are minus two and a half. Over under is forty two and a half. I'm gonna open with some stats here because I feel like I've been hiding stats from you and then revealing them to you too late where you're like, well, I'm already, I'm already in on my pick. Uh, so stats, Kevin Stefanski, 8-16 and 16 against the spread as a favorite. Not great. Kevin Stefanski against his former head coach, Bill Belichick, 2-6 and six against the spread. Also not great. Just some things to think about as you make this pick. Casey. I'm going to take you in a little time machine and go back to last year, 2021. The New England Patriots kicked the ever-living crap out of the Cleveland Browns. That game ended up with a 45-7. to I think this is going to be the exact same way. Zappi's going to be taking the field, slinging the rock. They look great, 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 great against the Detroit Lions last week. They're going to roll that momentum into this week. Hey, listen, you're telling me Browns have the best rushing offense in the league. Yes, that is true. However... Bill Belichick, big brain Bill. He's going to be stopping the run. They're not going to be able to control the clock the way they want to. I love the Pats. Give me Zappy. And I'll take the two and a half points. Why not? Free. 
Exactly. I couldn't agree more with you here. Um, I like, I think we're, I hate to be those corny sports analyst guys here, but I think we have another like better with the backup quarterback situation on our hands here. I love Bailey Zappi. I love everything about him. I also kind of feel like he's a little anti Bill Belichick. Like he's not a typical Patriots guy. His hair's a little bit longer. He's a little bit more of a free flowing guy. His last name is weird. Patriots never have guys with weird last names. They've always got very standard last names. Jones, Brady. Zappy's weird. So I like Zappy. Zappy. I mean, I think I do have the tendency to go against sort of like Patriots are at their all-time high. Browns are, people are a little down on the Browns right now. That being said, Pats as a dog coming off last week and what they were able to do. Confidence they were able to build in that room. Gotta go with the Pats and the points here. Casey, the, the, the Detroit Lions, they were able to completely shut them down. Jamal Williams, where you at, buddy? I'm on Sam Brown, where you at? Like, where are these guys? Just completely shut them down. That's big brain bill. Yeah, they're gonna be good on they're gonna be good on defense all year if they can keep doing what they did on offense. And the Browns defense is bad. Is Miles is Miles Garrett out? Back. He's back. He's back. Pretty bad car accident to come back from that fast. He's back. That car was fucked up. Jets at the Packers. Packers are minus seven. The over under in the game is at 46 and a half. I'll give you my stats. Stats are leaning Packers here. And it's all about Aaron Rodgers against the spread coming off a loss. He's 36 and 15 against the spread coming off a loss. And he's ridiculous. I didn't even write the number down. He's very, very good against the spread just at home. Uh, I, however, think that those stats could be a little inflated, right? The Green Bay Packers were really, really good for so long that sometimes with those trends, especially when there's a lot of numbers, it's like, well, how has he done in the last 10 games? And not like, don't give me everything when you give me that stat. All of that being said, exactly opposite of what I said with the last game where the Pats are riding high, Browns are down a little bit. I feel the same thing's happening here, but I'm not going with the team that everybody's riding high on. Jets, what have they really done when we look at the Jets? They beat a bad Steelers team, barely, who had a brought in a new quarterback midway through the game who's a rookie. They beat a Dolphins team with a third-string rookie in as quarterback. The public's so high on the Jets. They love them so much. I'm taking the Packers here, minus seven. Everybody's down on the Packers. They lost to the Giants. That was a London game. Throw that game away. Throw away the Jets beating the Dolphins last week. But do we have the Dolphins on our schedule this week? We don't. Let me comment really quick on this. If you make a bet on a team and then their quarterback goes out for the rest of the game on the like first or second play, you should be allowed to take that bet back. Listen, I, I bet on... Every, if you listen to the show last week, every single reasoning I had about that game was because Teddy Bridgewater was the fucking quarterback. If Teddy Bridgewater is not the quarterback, I don't want that bet anymore. It's absolute bullshit. And by the time I turned that game on, I knew it was a loser. So I was like, well, what happened to Teddy Bridgewater? That was, he's my guy. Did you not care about the safety of our players? No. You don't care about the safety of the NFL? No. God, have some goddamn respect, Casey. <laughs> Holy heck, buddy. You're just mad because that Jets team was an absolute overdrive. They 41 points by the New York Jets? Unbelievable. They did look good. I'm taking Packers minus seven this week at home. Casey, you just ran me through the schedule, buddy. Oh, they only beat this team by this much. They only beat this team by this much. Casey, the only two losses that they have are against the juggernauts in the AFC North. There are only two losses coming to the Cincinnati Bengals Super Bowl last year. The Baltimore Ravens probably should have been in the Super Bowl last year, at least made the playoffs if Lamar didn't get hurt, right? I think this Jets team is not getting as much respect. I hate the fact that they basic they already ran through the AFC North, two and two in the AFC North. You're coming out of there two and two. You gotta be smiling ear to ear in my mind. But listen, that Packers team looked disgusting in in, in uh, England. London. Hello. They look terrible. I woke up, cooked some breakfast. Sister came over. She moved, so she's closer now. And, you know, we eat breakfast. She sits down, hasn't watched an NFL game. 
pretty much ever. He says, that is one of the most disgusting teams I've ever seen. <laughs> What's going on with Aaron Rodgers' hair in the freaking in the hat, dude? He's got a little piece flip out. Oh, that whole oh, – feel good, play good. They got nothing of that going on. I like the Jets. I'm going to keep riding, buddy. Give me seven points, too. Why not? The seven, seven. The seven does seem crazy, but I'm seven. a little crazy. So – I'm I'm riding with Aaron Rodgers and I just think Rodgers is he's got too much pride to like not beat the Jets by 20 in this game. It's double team Cobb. Game over. <laughs> Brickhand Lazard, he can't catch anything. I I think you're wrong on this one. Interesting. This might be my best bet of the week. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop. You know what happens when you say that. You don't want to say those words. <laughs> you don't want to say those words. Um, third game on the slate, Jags at the Indianapolis Colts. Colts are minus one and a half. Total for the game is 41 and a half. I don't have a ton of stats here for you, but I have a little bit of a story, right? Everybody's looking at the Jags last week and they're like, Jags are shitty again. We knew it. Why did we let ourselves fall for them when they beat the Colts 24-0 and then they absolutely fucking put it on the Chargers when I bet the money line. And then they put up 14 points quick and we're up 14 nothing on the Eagles. And everybody's like, whoa, this Jaguars team might be really, really good. They lost to the Eagles in that game. And then they put up a stinker against the Texans last week. And now, all of a sudden, everybody thinks they suck again. They don't suck. Aaron Rodgers, R-E-L-A-X, relax everybody. The Jags are a good football team. They've got Doug Peterson leading their helm. They are 0-9 against the Texans in their last nine. 0-9, the Texans just beat them. That's what happens. Don't worry about the game against the Texans. They don't know how to beat the Texans. I don't know why they don't, but they don't. They will figure it out. Uh, they've got a good leader, right? Doug P. And guess what? You know who's on the other side? Doug Peterson's son, okay? Frank Reich is Dun Doug Peterson's son. He's going to be like, Daddy, what do you want me to do? You want me to you want me to lose this game for you? You want me to make it close? You want me to make it a blow? What do you want, Dad? And he's just going to dog walk his ass all day. Jags by 30 here. AC. God. I mean, that, that does make sense, buddy. That does make sense. But I just want you to shift your mindset real quick to the beginning of the season. Imagine it's, I don't even know, August 22nd, and you're looking at this game, and you're saying that you're taking the Indianapolis Colt are, are only a point-and-a-half favorite against the Jaguars. You're hammering that all day, Casey. You're hammering it all day. Although, well, everything you said made sense, I'm not taking a side in this game. I'm going to do something that's a small pea brain move to do. The Colts score the least amount of points so far this year out of any team in the NFL. I'm going to take the over, though. I think things are going to start to flip back. I don't know. No. This could be a dumb pick, AC. 42 and a half seems low. Both teams don't really score a lot. I had stats written down, but I cannot read my own handwriting right now, so I can't even throw them at you. <laughs> I think John. I think what I wrote down, I got to remember, but I think Jonathan Taylor is going to be out again. Matt Ryan's going to be forced to sling the ball. I'm taking the over. I'm going to try to have fun with this game. I love the Colts. Going to watch this game, probably on red zone. Hopefully we see them quite a few times, pop in and out, in and out, in and out. Aaron. Matt Ryan, back game, question mark. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind a little feel for that. So this is just strictly off the gut here. Strictly off the gut. I'll tell you what. Actually, right now it's at forty-one and a half, according to what I got it at. So I'll give you another point as well. Maybe. I hate that pick. I hate it so much. Pu. That's a pu pick, buddy. The Colts are averaging like thirteen points a game. I think. Yeah, but the Jags beat the Colts twenty-four to nothing like three weeks ago. Exactly, Casey. It's a week-to-week -week game case. <laughs> Don't throw on the pass too much, buddy. I could see, I think I see what you're trying to do here, which is you're trying to do the old nobody will see this one coming. Now's the time that it actually happens game 
where like everyone's going to look. You think this is going to be the game this week where everybody looks at it and they're like, holy shit, Jags Colts 32 to 28. Who saw that coming? Really quick, last game in the one o'clock slate here. 49ers at the Atlanta Falcons. My Atlanta Falcons are favored, or I'm sorry, my Atlanta Falcons are underdogs, of course, by five and a half points. The over-under is at 44 and a half. I don't even need to say anything here. Falcons, 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 5-0 and against the spread, 6-0 and against the spread coming up. They're going to be the first team in NFL history to go 17-0 and against the spread. And I'm going to love every single second of it. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm going to say it every week. I sound like a fucking broken record at this point. This Falcons team should not be dogs by five and a half points right now. See, they're barely covering the spreads, though, buddy. They're bare, they're, they are they are sneaking in the back door to cover. They, this game should be a seven point spread in my <laughs> mind. Even more, this this should have been a ten point spread. I think I think you're wrong. I think the line is shifting towards that already. But these are just back door spread after back door spread. I looked, I t- flipped it on. I'm like, oh, we lost the Falcons bet. They fucking finally came back to earth once I bet on them. Boom! They hit me with a backdoor spread. I love them. I could kiss them on the freaking lips, Casey. <laughs> with that being said, though, that 49ers team is kicking the living dog shit out of teams, buddy. They're running up the score. They're the only team in the NFL the past two weeks that is like, other than the Bill Steelers, that they didn't they didn't take their foot off the foot off the gas, buddy. They they went straight after it. You missed a game in between there. Which I think you're you're just letting go of your memory, and I think all 49ers betters might be. I mean, they lost to the Broncos, who are bad. Casey Russell Wilson was in hyperdrive. That, that's he was he was chefing up. Yeah, he was chef chefing it up. And yep, throw that one out. I forgot about the whole Russell Wilson thing. Casey, I, I I think this team is blowing teams out. I think the 49ers are a real deal. They're not in my top ten right now, but they're knocking on the door. I think they're elite. I think that I, I genuinely think they're elite. I, I think they could win the NFC Championship. I once Trey Lance got hurt, the 49ers became back to being my team. Garoppolo's a great quarterback for our system. Don't get me wrong, I love the 49ers. I love Kyle Shanahan. I just love the Falcons way more. Like I something I'm actually scared about what's happening with me and the Falcons this year because they're notoriously bad and they notoriously like let people down and disappoint below expectations but I think I caught them at a time when everybody when expectations were low on them so like I got to kit them on the come up I hope they don't fall off on me they're gonna pull the rug out from underneath the case I also have I have the Falcons are my only team that I have at uh that I have futures on for this year I have a future on them to make the playoffs and I have a future on them over four and a half wins. Tough, tough. Looking good. Casey, what, Kyle Pitts update. He was out last week. No targets again. Okay. Bullshit. He might have actually got a couple more targets just on Marcus Mariota throwaways down the sidelines. Casey was out last week. Yeah, I mean, if he was standing on the sideline, though. My Marcus Mariota throws the ball I, away quite a bit. Under. My apologies, yes. yes sir. <laughs> um, all right. Big game. Big, big game here. Bills at Chiefs. The Chiefs are two and a half point dogs at home. The total for this game is at a whopping 53 and a half points. What a game. That's, I mean, like, football guys unite. What a game. I'm so excited for this game. I hope it doesn't let us down. I have a funny feeling this is going to be a low-scoring game. Defenses are going to be getting revved up for the game. Crowd's going to play a big factor in that too, Case. I, I, could, I could see that happen. Arrowhead, place gets loud, buddy. So let me give you the stats for this game, and I'm going to give you my reasoning. The only stat I could find points Chiefs, and I think it's another little bit of a lopsided one here. Mahomes... 7-0-1 oh, against the spread as a dog in his career. Kind of crazy he's only been an underdog eight times in his entire career. Mm-hmm. But every single time he's been an underdog, he's covered the spread 7-0-1. Oh, one. one time uh, tied the spread. Or push, sorry. And I don't think that matters here because of fate. 
and I just don't want to root for the Chiefs. That is that's my that is my logic here. I couldn't looking at both these teams. Obviously, they're both fucking awesome. They both have they're like the same team kind of in a lot of ways where not like maybe a couple of big names in the receiving core tight end area that like you got Kelsey and you got Diggs. Everyone else kind of role players that I think the quarterback makes them a little bit better than they actually are. Both really high scoring teams, high power offenses, defenses that can be scrappy at times, can turn the ball over at times. So in terms of analyzing this game, it was tough. It's really tough to do in terms of like a statistical, trying to think about different sides here. I My logic is coming down to, I don't want to root for the Chiefs. I want the Bills to win this game because they should have won in the playoffs last year. They should have won in that, was it ASC championship game or the game before? No, divisional game. Yeah, because the Bengals beat the Chiefs. So they should have won in the AFC divisional game against the Chiefs, that crazy ass game with 20 seconds and 13 seconds and whatever happened back and forth. They should have won that one. They didn't. They need to win this one because we're setting up for a perfect Disney storyline trilogy ending Bills versus Chiefs AFC championship game this year. Rubber match. Let's see who can take it for all the marbles. But we need the Bills to win this game in order to get there. So I'm going to bet on the Bills with with the two and it laying the two and a half points here. I'm not crazy confident about it. I just want to root for the Bills. Casey, I got one. I, I listen. I'm the biggest Bills fan there probably is. Yep. We live close to Buffalo. Well, we're only a couple I, hour drive. Can I do a quick power ranking of Manny's favorite NFL teams? Yeah. Number one, the AFC North. Number two, the Bills. Number three, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fair. Continue. Number Listen, four, there- Jameis Winston. Continue. Okay. Okay. Listen, why would the Bills not let Josh Allen go for the passing record? What, do they not have faith in him? That was absolute. That was one thing from the game. I wanted to see them beat the Steelers even worse than they did. I wanted to see Josh Allen either break the yards record, which, I mean, after the first half, let the guy keep slinging the ball. Who cares? Or get the touchdown record. He had four going into freaking half. That's the let one. The, let the guy keep slinging it. That's the one time when you like don't mind if your team is being blown out, is if like a record is being set or make broken. history of it. Yeah. Unbelievable. But Casey, so you're pit, are you still pissed at the Bills for that? Or are you kind of over? Actively, it? I'm okay. actively okay. Casey, they they did they made a lot of mistakes with the football. I think they're the best team in the NFL. But some of those mistakes, I mean, Sean McDermott's got to get those guys going. Two fumbles in the end zone. I mean, I mean, what are we doing here? Those are points you're leaving on the board, and those are points you do not want to leave to the Kansas City Chiefs because they'll take them and they'll eat them right up, Case. Do so I'm taking again? the Kansas City. again? No, I, I need to see the hand a little bit better. So, I, Thank you. Thank you. Casey, in, at Arrowhead, this place is going to be loud. Chiefs as underdogs, I like the Chiefs in this spot. I mean, listen, you laid out a whole Disney story, blah, blah, blah. I think the Disney story is they've never gotten over the hump. AFC Championship game, the Bills finally take them down and win, and they go off to win their Super Bowl. So I do think they're going to match up again in the AFC Championship. I do see the Bills winning. I do not see the Bills winning on Sunday, though. I'm taking the Chiefs. That's actually a really good counter to my Disney story. That like if they just keep getting held down by the Chiefs and then the AFC Championship game is the climax when they really overcome. Shit. Casey, it's like Lion King, buddy. Yeah. It's like Lion King. True. You really put a wrench in my plans there. Or like Up. Oh. Yeah. For the younger, oh. for talk the about, younger talk kids. About the, talk about the saddest five seconds of a movie. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. Jumping right into that one hard. Saddest five seconds of the movie. Saddest ever five seconds to start a movie. Ever. Um, Bill, yeah. Bill's probably Bill's probably would have cut it off halfway, so it didn't get that record. But, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next game. Exactly. They would have they would have cut it off at two and a half seconds. Um. All right, Sunday night football. This is a big one for my boys in the NFC Beast. This one is going to decide who leads the NFC East. Assuming. Yes, yes, this one, both of them will have the tiebreaker. This is going to decide who wins the NFC, who leads the NFC East by the end of this game. We've got the Dallas Cowboys going into Philadelphia, into the link, 
taking on the Eagles. The Eagles are minus six and a half, and the total is at 42 and a half. You go first. You see that Cowboys defense, buddy. They look absolutely phenomenal. They're flying all around the field. Listen, Cooper Rush was the quarterback. Hey, he was I... not the reason they won that game. He you... wasn't the reason they won. Who that won? defense is smothering people. I don't think Michael Parsons is the best player in that defense. Um, but I think Dexter Lawrence, maybe. He will... I but didn't... who knows? I didn't correct you last week. For people who don't know, Manny's bad with names. It's Demarcus Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence is on the Giants. Fair. Fair. They're both defensive linemen, so... Point taken. Point taken. You know the only reason I know it... They got two Lawrence's back there on defense. One of them's got to be Demarcus. One of them's (laughs) got to be Dexter. Yeah, right? There's got to be a Dexter somewhere on their team. I do look at D. Lawrence. I'm like, this guy's a beast. (laughs) Automatically think he's Dexter Lawrence. All right, moving into it, though. That defense is smothering people. Jalen Hurts is not going to be able to get the outside. Exactly what I said last week about the Cardinals. Exactly what I said. Even though I was wrong last week, I'm going to be right this week about it. Cardinals covered. Cardinals are a way worse team than the uh, the Cowboys. I like the Cowboys in this spot. The only problem is, is this game might be – this game might end up 14-9. Don't oh, see a ton of points being scored. It's going to be a little I agree with you. I actually think that the under is a good play in this game. The only reason I have a problem with it is it's at like the same number that the fucking Colts and Jags are at. These yeah. numbers are really low for NFL this week, I feel like. I agree. They're all like right around 40s, 41s. It's kind of crazy. And I'm just bad at betting totals in general. Hold on. I want to find – do you think uh, – what's it? Do you think uh, – did Jalen Hurts run for a lot of yards last week? I think he had 38 yards rushing. 61. Oh, he just had two touchdowns. That's what you were talking about. No, I think you were. I think you ended up being exactly right on that game last week. I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. They really did. Like Jalen Hurts not being able to move with his legs, I think, was a big factor in that game. Bigger factor here is that Eagles defense is also really good, and I just think that this is going to be a low-scoring, slug it out fight, and. I think the Eagles offense has a better chance of adapting and working with like what the Cowboys defense is giving them than the Cowboys defense does or Cowboys offense with the Eagles defense. I think the Cowboys offense with Cooper Rush, it's probably fairly one dimensional. I don't think they're built to play from behind. They haven't had to play from behind yet. This is Casey. Casey, I I, I don't The Eagles are not going to establish the run. The Eagles are not going to be able to establish the run. Who's Miles Sanders going to establish the run from? Jalen Hurts, is he going to establish the run? They're going to be forced to air the ball against this Cowboys team. I, I'm not saying what you're saying is not – I'm not saying you're wrong about the Cowboys being one-dimensional. But on the same side – on the other side of the token, I'm at, I think we're looking at the exact same picture. All right. I got to make a pick here. This is a really tough game for me. Let me tell you what I'm thinking in my head. My my signs show the line like so the line is moving so heavy towards Dallas. Like this line opened at I think a pick'em and it's just been moving, 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 moving all the way to six and a half now. That like I really am tempted to take the Cowboys here. Wait, wait till Friday and get it at one. Wait till Sunday and get it at one uh seven. Get it going. Let it go all the way up to seven. You think it's gonna let it get... keep going, Casey. Let it run. I'm taking the birds minus six and a half. I like yelling "Go birds!" I love yelling "Go birds!" I'm taking the birds minus six and a half. I hate the Cowboys more than I hate the Eagles, and Cooper Rush has got to hit a wall at some point, right? He's got to. He's not a starting quarterback, right? He's a backup. He can't just keep Do winning. Do it there. You would think, Case. You would think. I don't like it. Birds minus six and a half. I don't like it, though. I think I think my brain is telling me to take the Cowboys. But Vegas is smarter than me. There's got to be a reason that the Eagles are minus six and a half here. All right, buddy. Monday Night Football. First, 
Monday Night Football game in the history of the shit show. So give it up for us. We're doing our very first Monday Night Football game. The Denver Broncos heading into Hollywood, City of Angels, LA, taking on the Chargers. Chargers are minus four and a half. Totals at 45 and a half. What do you got here? I got no stats. Casey did absolutely zero preparation for this game. Didn't even know it was going to be on the card. And as soon as you told me it, buddy, I perked up. I love this game, Casey. I was going to take it for myself anyway. I love the Chargers. I think they've been underperforming all year. I think they're a top 10 team in the NFL. It just They just haven't broken through yet. And I think this might be the week with an absolute domination over the Broncos team, which I know they can do. Broncos absolutely stink. I love it, Casey. The Broncos team could not even score against the Colts. That was the ugliest football game I ever watched. Turned it off in the third quarter. Could not stand looking at it anymore. Why to wash my gosh dang eyeballs out against a team that's got Herbert, Eckler. Keenan Allen might be back this week. Mike Williams, I love it, Casey. I, I don't even know. I can't remember what you said the spread was. Four and a half. Uh, Ten. 12, <laughs> All right. Give me the Chargers. I looked at this game and I thought the same thing right away. I said, whoa, Chargers minus four and a half. They're really, really good. Broncos are really, really bad. Why are they, why is that the spread? Here's why I think it's the spread. I think I know what's going to happen in this game. This is a game where the Chargers will go up by conservatively 21 points. And then they will just slowly let the Broncos crawl back into it. And they'll win the game by three. And I think that that is what will happen. Chargers, for whatever reason, when they are really, really... When they are way better than another team, they still barely beat them. That's just the way they play. They should have crushed the Browns last week. They were they played so much better than the Browns and they still only beat them barely. But, but Casey, they gave up 14 points right off the bat. They had a slow start in that game. That was a game you wanted to see out of the Chargers where they just kind of just kept clawing their way back. Maybe maybe that will happen. I could see that as well, other way around. Slow start. Russ, Russ starts cooking back there right off the bat. Chargers have to come back. Ah, that, that's, that's all a fallacy, Casey. They're going to they're gonna kick the crap out of them. You know, I feel like when well, I... But- I can't understand why we keep putting uh, these Denver Broncos in prime time. Did we think the NFL thought they were going to be really good this year, huh? Because I feel like I've seen the Broncos play far too many times this year already. I should not be forced to watch that much of this Denver Broncos team play football. Casey, they're, all they're thinking about is quarterback goes to a better team. Look at Tom Brady, left New England, then wins it goes and wins the Super Bowl. Stafford, same thing. Tom, Russ is not that guy. Russ, that never Gino happens. Gino Smith is better than Russ. That never happens. Tom Brady yeah. and Matt Stafford just fucked no. NFL teams for years because they all think that they can go do that now. That does not happen. That is that just it's it's an anomaly that it happened two years in a row. But like, think about all the other times that every team that's been just a quarterback away goes out and gets like a big name guy who's on the back half of his career, and it just burns up in their face. Casey, Bruce Arians, right? He was able to do it. Sean McVay was able to do it. You think hack a sack? <laughs> you think hacky sack can get the job done? Get out of here, buddy. Uh, that's one here. of my favorites of your names right there. That was good. I like that one. Nathaniel Hacky Sack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, good luck this week, pal. The boy in the blazer. That's what they're calling him. The boy in the blazer. We're back.